Hello, my name's Roisin and welcome to my November TBR. It is so dark. It is midday. It is literally midday. Yep. And it is already dark. So remembering how fun it is filming in the autumn and winter. I feel a bit chaotic today. Um, anyway. Hello friends. So today I wanted to talk to you about the books I'm going to read in November. Um, however, I don't think I am going to read all of these books in November. I have been very ambitious yet again. I have got 17 books that I would like to read th this month and the past two months I've only managed to read about eight or nine books. So I really don't think I'm going to be getting to all of these. However, um, it's good to have more than you can possibly read. I think it gives you the scope for some uh, mood reading within a TBR. <laughs> At least that's what I'm telling myself. Uh, I have three main aims I would like to achieve this month. First, it is non-fiction November, and so I have a couple of non-fiction books on my list. Because of my other aims, I can't make my whole list be non-fiction, but I did want a little nod to that. Second, uh, on the 19th of November, the Booker Prize is announced, and so I wanted to read the entire shortlist, like I read the shortlist of the Women's Prize for which I will leave in the cards above if you would like to go and check that out. And third is that I have too many library books and I want to try and read as many of them as possible before I give them back because I did a video where I tried to read the beginning of my library books and see if I wanted to return any of them, uh, which I will again leave in the cards above and it turned out no, I uh, know what I like. <laughs> <laughs> so I just need to try and read as many of these as possible and I think I might be doing a sort of read it or lose it kind of thing. I have to read them or to send them back by the end of this month. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how brave I'm feeling. Anyway, so the first, first I'm going to talk to you about my two non-fiction books. Um, the first one I have here is Homecoming by Colin Grant. I intended to read this last month, which is why I got it out of the library, um, but I definitely want to read it before I return it. This book is subtitled The Voices of the Windrush Generation, and it is a collection of pieces of writing or interviews from the time or later on of people who came over to Britain as part of the Windrush Generation in the 1950s. There were people who lived in the Caribbean and were invited to Britain. Um, to, in order to rebuild the labour force after the Second World War. However, they were not treated very kindly and they still are not being treated very kindly. As we had the Windrush scandal a couple of years ago, which I will leave information in, in the description if you would like to read more on that, and I would highly recommend that you do. But this has over a hundred first-hand interviews um, about that time period, which is definitely something that I want to know more about. The other non-fiction book I picked up on a whim and that is Island Dreams Mapping and Obsession by Gavin Francis. This is a book um, about islands and our a collective obsession with islands and isolation um, and it's it's kind of a combination of nature and travel writing with elements of psychology, philosophy and great voyages from literature um, and it also has a lot of um, old maps involved which i love as well um i recently made a video where i talked about how i love books set on islands or in isolated places which i'll leave in the cards above and um, i saw this and thought oh my god yes i have to um and it has also been blurbed by robert mcfarlane who wrote the underland which was a book that i've read about half of and i really enjoyed and also by hilary mantel who's one of my favorite authors and i just thought beautiful book i'm obsessed with islands it's been blurbed by two writers i love i have to pick it up and then I also want to read five of the books that have been shortlisted for the Booker Prize for Fiction. I say five because I've already read The Shadow King by Maza Mengiste, which I read in February, and I will leave a video where I read it up in the cards above. So I want to read the other five that I haven't read. Um, the two I have physical copies of so far are The New Wilderness by Diane Cook, which has been described almost as a feminist uh, The Road by Cormac McCarthy, and is about a mother and daughter who live in a vast metropolis, but the daughter is sick, and so they volunteer to be part of this um, contingent who will go out into the wilderness where mankind has never been allowed to go before and set a, see what happens. And have uh, an experience of being outside uh, of the safety of the metropolis even though the metropolis is slowly killing her daughter um, and it sounds like it's going to be quite bleak um, and it's kind of climate change novel about autonomy survival and civilization and reveal a starting new life teeming beneath thrilling curious vibrant book so that's interesting then i've also got shiggy bane by uh, douglas stewart which is about a woman called agnes bane whose um, husband leaves her with three children in 1980s glasgow which is being ravaged by thatcherite policies um and about her son shiggy who has been described as not right um and her descent into alcoholism and his wanting to save his mother but also dealing with his own um, difference and his uh, life of poverty in glasgow 
Then I also want to read Real Life by Brandon Taylor, which is the story of a black man who is a biologist studying for a PhD at university and also a gay man. Um, and it's set over the course of a weekend, I believe, but it also flashes back into his past about the um, racism and microaggressions he has experienced for his uh, blackness and his homosexuality and also his relationship with a man who wasn't very nice. But I've heard so many people rave about it that I definitely want to read it. I also want to read Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi, which is a novel set in India about a woman who has a strange relationship with her mother. Then her mother develops dementia and she has to become the carer for this woman that she has such a difficult relationship with. Um, and it flashes back to their past to explore how that relationship came to be so strained, as well as what it is like to care for someone who um, is losing their memory and with whom you have such a difficult relationship. And then the final Booker Prize nominee that I have not yet read is This Mournable Body by Tsitsi Dagaremba, which is kind of a sequel, I believe, but I think it can be read as a standalone as well, which I'm going to do. This is about Tambu Dazi who lives in Harare and has left her job and she feels really anxious about what will happen in the future. And at every turn, something uh, drags her down until she reaches breaking point. It is about this young woman exploring her fledgling life and also about Zimbabwe itself. So that is all of the Booker Prize winners that I want to read. Now I'm going to move on to some of the library books that I'm going to try and get through. And this is where I feel like I'm going to fall down. So um, I have The Illness Lesson by Claire Beams, which is about a uh, school for young girls set up in the 1850s in Massachusetts and these mysterious red birds that arrive and the girls start getting sicker. It is about the mysterious scientist that treats them and um, it seems like it's going to be quite a dark gothic novel. I also want to read Till by Daniel Kellman, which is a piece of historical fiction set in Germany during the Thirty Years' War um, in the court of Bohemia. Till is a trickster character from German folklore who has been transplanted into the future to play as a court jester in this court of Bohemia. Um, and it is about kind of the collapse of Europe, which uh, seems oddly prescient. Between the quests of fat counts, wit hun witch hunters and scheming queens, Till dances his mocking fugue, exposing the folly of kings and the wisdom of fools. I love historical fiction. I'm very interested in reading something set some in a time period that I have no knowledge of whatsoever. Seems like it's going to be slightly folklore and slightly fantasy. Um, there's a touch of it with talk of the Winter King and also Till, of course, being a trickster character himself. Um, it is one that was shortlisted for the Booker International Prize um, and so I'm definitely intrigued in reading that and it was translated from the German by Ross Benjamin. Uh, I also would like to read Swimming in the Dark by Thomas Yerdowski which is the story of a gay man growing up in Soviet Poland and his experience where he goes away to this camp um, in the summer so it was kind of it was uh, compulsory for university students to go and work in these camps as farmers um, before they could graduate from university and that's where he meets this other boy um, that they have a relationship but it is um, illegal in uh, Soviet Poland and also there is a struggle with being homosexual in Poland at the moment it was also in relation to Giovanni's room and the work of James Baldwin um, is mentioned a lot in here uh, and this is kind of a reaction to a talk discussion with that book and it's about how they survive once they have to go back to Warsaw after summer is over. Another one I would like to read is If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha which is set in South Korea and is about three women who are um, dealing with the beauty culture and the plastic surgery culture in South Korea and the sexism and misogyny rampant. Kayuri who's an exquisitely beautiful woman whose hard won status at an exclusive room shirt salon is threatened by an impulsive mistake with a client. Her flatmate Mio, an orphan who wins a scholarship to a prestigious art school in New York where her love a life becomes tragically enmeshed with the super wealthy offspring of the Korean elite. Wona, their neighbour, pregnant with a child that she and her husband have no idea how well they will afford. And Ara, a hairstylist living down the hall, whose infatuation with a fresh face K-pop star drives her to violent extremes. It's kind of a dark, satirical book, I believe. Another piece of historical fiction now is The Slaughterman's Daughter by Yaniv Ikskovitz, which is set in Ukraine um, in I'm not sure what time period, um, but it's kind of folkloric, as you can tell from the beautiful cover. Um, and it is about this town of Motel, which is a shtetl, uh, where all these the Jewish people live in Ukraine and the men have been going missing uh, over time. Um, but one day a woman goes missing as well, which has never been heard of before. She leaves her children and her husband behind and her uh, sister-in-law has to set off to try and find her and see what has happened to her. 
and this book has been translated from the Hebrew by Orshoff. Another book that I've heard lots of praise of is The Bass Rock by E.V. Wilde. This is another piece of historical fiction, although this follows three women throughout time. One of the women is living in, I believe, the 16th century um, and has been accused of witchcraft. Another is living just after the Second World War and um, is dealing with her new uh, her new marriage and becoming a stepmother and also uh, violence in that relationship and then also her granddaughter in um, contemporary times who is going through her things and discovering this history. Um, this is all set in Scotland around the Bass Rock which is a big island that can be seen off the coast of Scotland um, and so the nature and the um, isolation of the Bass Rock is part of the story. Um, this is a book that I've heard Jen Campbell rave about and Lauren from Lauren and the Books and I feel like with the aspects of witchcraft, the historical fiction, I'm really going to enjoy it. Next is a collection of short stories and that is A Registry of My Passage Upon the Earth by, by Daniel Mason and this is a collection of historical fiction short stories. I love historical fiction and I'm trying to get into short stories more. These stories cap a 15 year project that has won a National Magazine Award and the Pushcart Prize, spanning from the Nile's depths to the highest reaches of the atmosphere, from the volcano racked islands to an asylum on the outskirts of Rio de Janeiro, Daniel Mason has created a dazzling and rich collection of fi fiction. At times funny and irreverent, always moving, captures life in all its forms. Um, I wasn't sure about this. I love the cover. It is absolutely stunning, but I wasn't sure I was going to like it. But I read the first story as part of my uh, seeing if these books are worth my time video and I loved it so much I loved the writing so I'm definitely going to try and read this. Another one I wasn't sure about when I read a chapter for the try a chapter tab, but then was intrigued by when I read more of it for the are these books worth my time video that I did um, is The Year Without Summer by Guinevere Glassford which is about the eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815 and the experience of the year after that when summer never came because the ash clouds in the sky blocked the sunlight and it never got warm so it's kind of a, a climate change novel um, and it follows the lives of six people throughout uh, Europe at this time. Uh, some of them are famous like Mary Shelley and John Constable and some of them aren't um, and it kind of talks about the politics of the time like it talks about the enclosures of the common land in England which is something that I'm really interested in um, and so this sort of Regency era novel in Europe is sounds like it's going to be a lot more interesting than I thought it would initially. And then finally, one that I know I need to read is The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich. This is another piece of historical fiction, although this time it's set in the 1950s, in 1953 in rural North Dakota, in this reservation where a factory has been built just outside and the women are working in the factory and the main character Thomas Wajashk is a uh, the night watchman at the factory but he is also involved in the band's leadership and he is um, involved with the introduction of the Emancipation Bill which is talking about freeing the uh, and giving it's talking about freeing and giving more rights to the Native American people but is actually denying their rights to be part of a tribe or a band or a nation um, that is not the US and so this is another period of history that I don't know anything about Louise Erdrich is a writer that I've heard so many great things about and it is in Digathon in November um, which I clearly am not participating in that much but it would be good to read at least one piece of Native American fiction during this month so that is it that is my giant giant TBR that I'm very very sure I will not read all of but which I'm going to try my best to read as much of as possible please let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books yourself um, and if you set yourself overly ambitious TBRs like I seem to do every single month um, hopefully November will be better than September and October have been reading wise and I will get through more of these than I have been so far please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe because I put out new videos every Wednesday Friday and Sunday and so I will definitely see you again soon. Bye-bye!